G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to talk about some trade predictions. So a few days ago, uh, by the time I'm recording this, I put a post on the YouTube community tab asking for your trade predictions. I did the same thing with your AFL unpopular opinions. That video is now out up on the True Footy YouTube channel. And today we're going to discuss your predictions for how trades are going to go. I realize this can be a little bit rough because trade news and rumors in particular this time of year are changing so fast so this is, if there's a four or five a day gap between you posting the opinion and me responding to it in some cases stories have progressed a little bit but we'll go through it all so i'm going to start off with a fairly strong opinion from paul sheehan and it's around the eagles and the hawthorne deal for tom barris he says west coast are fools if they think a 29 year old uh, with durability issues is worth two firsts I understand he's a fantastic defender, but Hawthorne would be mad to do that trade. Might not go through to the last minute. I'm not sure if you're saying that it might not go through at all or it might go through at the last minute, but I think I get what you're saying there, Paul. I completely get where you're coming from with this particular take. I do have some rebuttals. So to start off, West Coast asking for two firsts, I think it's an important nuance that I don't think they're necessarily going to be demanding two first round picks outright i think from what is being discussed i think they might be offering to send a future pick back hawthorne's way so that is important to start off with tb is a really really good defender and probably a little bit underrated outside of western australia i realize you actually already acknowledge that so we'll go past that part the fact that he's 29 i do i do get where you're coming from with that i suppose i would just offer the fact that i believe sam mitchell has sought this one out in particular so there's obviously a keenness there from hawthorne's point of view and I believe it's also a five-year contract or a fourth with a trigger for five so there is obviously a fair chunk of time there a fair chunk of service it's not as though you're getting him right at the twilight of his career that being said I still understand the hesitancy to offer two first round picks at all for it the fact that he's contracted works in west coast favor so I don't think they're fools for trying to drive up his price I think that's just best practice in this scenario and a very significant factor in this is obviously that first round picks are not all equal right and when this story first broke Hawthorne's first selection might have been around 9 or 10 if they beat Port Adelaide I'm recording this the day before they play Port, uh, Port Adelaide in the semi-final if they win that that becomes pick 15 if they win to get into the grand final per, past that it's pick 17 then there's the Josh Battle compensation pick which also pushes that back which I'd imagine comes in before this pick so my point being we're looking at a pick in the late teens this year and if you expect Hawthorne to be good again next year the same will apply. So pick, let's call it 16 or 17 on its own outright is unders for Tom Barris. Two top 20 picks, it's probably closer to the mark. And like I said, I think there might be even something going back Hawthorne's way. Gbags98 has the next suggestion. Also, shout out to you, Gbags. You are a very recent member of the True Footy YouTube channel, so I thank you for your support. It says that Alex Neil Bullen heads to Adelaide for a late first round or second round pick. Both Liam Baker and Shea Bolton leave for WA clubs, which leaves Richmond with one of the strongest draft hands in recent memory. Dan Houston heads back home to Vic, and Collingwood could make a play, uh, play for Bailey Smith or Alex Davies. So straight off the bat, I think one of these things has been rendered um, null and void by the fact that I believe Alex Davies is staying at the Gold Coast, but we'll go through everything else. As for Neil Bullen, that looks like it's pretty much a done deal, and Cal Toomey at least expects it to be pick 25, so no argument from me there. Baker and Bolton, I agree, probably more likely to leave than stay. I'm still a little unsure where Liam Baker goes. I think more than 50-50, he ends up at West Coast. It seems unlikely he would stay, but I guess it's possible. Shea Bolton is contracted, but as we've discussed before, because there's a compassionate element here where he's potentially moving back for family, that might accelerate the deal. So I, I pretty much agree with your predictions. And it would be interesting to see what Richmond do. So if they get pick six and pick nine, say, out of these deals for uh, Rioli and Bolton, there's talks of pick splits with both West Coast and North Melbourne. So could Richmond have picks one, two, and three in the draft? We're suddenly looking at like a draft like GWS and Gold Coast had when they entered the competition. Dan Houston heading back home to Victoria. Yeah, so I think it came out that he'd verbally pledged his allegiance to Port Adelaide, and then subsequently after that, they suggested it's not a done deal. I don't really know where that sits, but fair enough. Collingwood making a play for Bailey Smith. I actually think... Now that I think about it, I actually don't know if that's completely dead in the water because before we go any further, I just want to let you guys know that this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. There are a multitude of benefits to accessing something like therapy. First of all, it provides a great safe space to talk. You can share whatever is on your mind, whether it's stress or sadness, and you can have that 
without the fear of any judgment. And there's nothing wrong with having these conversations with friends or loved ones, but through therapy, you'd actually get guided advice from an expert. That is a trained mental health expert who is there to listen, ask questions, and help you see new perspectives. And one thing that I suspect people do is that they wait until the problems in their life reach such a level or a threshold that they feel like they then need to get therapy to fix it, whereas perhaps you could think about therapy as a source of personal growth. You don't necessarily need to have a clinical mental health issue such as depression or anxiety before you can seek out therapy. So as I said, BetterHelp is the paid partner of this video and they're on a mission to make starting therapy easier. And getting started with BetterHelp is really easy. All you need to do is go to the link in this description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. From there, you fill out a questionnaire and in most cases, you'll get matched within a couple of days. And one of the best features about BetterHelp is that if you feel like the therapist you get isn't quite the right fit, you can switch to another one at no additional cost. If you're someone who is struggling and think you could benefit from a therapy session, go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy or visit the link in the description to get started. Clicking the link does support the channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Thanks guys, let's get back to the video. I believe he wants to get to Geelong, but there seems to be this undercurrent of tension between the cats and the dogs. And if Collingwood somehow get picks, you know, I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video, but if they do a pick swap with Gold Coast, trading a future first for one of Gold Coast picks this year, then they come back into the frame, have a better selection than Geelong are likely to have in this year's draft. And because it's Collingwood, could they potentially turn Bailey Smith's head? I think there could be a little bit to play out there. We've got a few more on Bailey Smith. Curious Caleb says Bailey Smith gets to Geelong, but a player is also part of that deal. Hope that doesn't happen. Potentially, potentially. I, uh, I, I don't really have too much insight as to guessing which Geelong players might um, be willing to move because that's going to be a key part here. So if it's a player that's currently out of contract, I'd imagine that wouldn't do much to help the deal because it probably means they might get delisted anyway. If they're still unsigned at this point in the season, I could be wrong. If it's a contracted player, they'd have to talk them into leaving to the Western Bulldogs, but it's not beyond the realm of possibility. Canville says Bailey Smith Geelong is looking very possible. I agree that is the most likely outcome at this point. And Amusement Productions says Geelong get Bailey Smith, the Dogs get Geelong's first, and James Peatling, and the Giants get Geelong's second round pick. Now, just considering the fairness of that. So, Cat's current first pick is pick 16, uh, obviously before the prelim finals. That could become anywhere between 17 and 19. And that's even before academy bids or anything like that. That's with a Josh Battle compensation pick, which may be banned one. And, you know, obviously where they finish at the end of the final. So we're talking about, say, let's call it pick 17, 18, uh, and James Peatling for Bailey Smith. I mean... On fairness, perhaps? James Peatling has had a very good year. However, I think since you posted this, it's come out that James Peatling is very, very committed to staying at the Giants. He himself said he's 100% staying, but he hasn't signed a contract yet. So we'll see what happens. Samuel Securo says, Adelaide to land Neil Bullen, Lukosius, and Cumming. Man, man, that would be a huge offseason for them if they can get it. How do they get Lukosius is the question for me, because... They'll give up pick 25 for Neil Bullen, reportedly. They hold pick four and not a whole lot after that. Isaac Cumming, they could get through free agency, so we can park that to one side, but how do they get a deal done for Lukosius? It's a tough one because Adelaide's not going to give up pick four, but would they split pick four down to get a deal done for Lukosius? Would they offer their future first? I can see both sides of the argument here where Lukosius got dropped this year, so you could make the argument, why would we pay a first-round draft pick for a player who got dropped? On the other hand, he is... A, very talented in my opinion, and probably underutilized at the Gold Coast Suns, and B, still contracted and not a play that Gold Coast is actively shopping. They're just letting him explore his options. So Adelaide will need to satisfy the Gold Coast Suns with a deal here. Depends how serious they are. Will they back themselves in uh, to improve next year and therefore a future first round selection could be on the cards? I'd actually, for some reason, like to see this happen. I'd like to see... Jack Lukosius end up at Adelaide. Jaden says, Jack McRae to Geelong, Caleb Daniel to Melbourne, and Perryman to Port, offering nearly 200k more than the Hawks. Okay, that's the first I've heard of that. I didn't realize Port Adelaide's offer was so much higher than um, Hawthorne's. I suppose it's probably necessary to get him across to Adelaide. I suppose either way, he's moving into state, but Hawthorne, you know, being an MCG tenant and the hype team of the AFL right now, probably do need to offer a fair bit more. So that's interesting. We'll see what happens there. I have no real insight. Jack McCray to Geelong is an interesting one. Yeah, he, he, I think he will leave the Western Bulldogs. We've put in a trade request, so not a huge call. Same thing with Caleb Daniel. He, I don't think he's put a, a trade request in yet, 
Both of these players are contracted, so it's highly unlikely that neither of them play football next year, right? Unless both of them get their contracts slashed and they get paid out. It's not going to happen. So I'd imagine both of these players find new clubs, to be honest. I don't know about Caleb Daniel. It hasn't been a request yet. McRae to Geelong probably makes sense with Geelong's recruitment strategy. They don't mind topping up with some veterans and McRae is probably a little bit better than he's produced in recent times. It would go pretty cheap, that deal. Would they get McRae and Smith together? Caleb Daniel is obviously a very talented football that's fallen out of favor. I think a fresh start would be good for him. There's been no real suggestion, you know, which club he would go to, but we could. it could be Melbourne. Eagles fan 008 says, Shea Bolton and Liam Baker to West Coast for pick three. I am uh, curious to see the extent to which West Coast is serious at all about trying to get Shea Bolton. He has requested a trade to Fremantle. I suppose it's not over till the fat lady sings, but personally, I don't know how I'd feel about it. I th feel like Bolton is probably an icing on the cake player while we're still building the cake. So I kind of hope we don't. I'm sure I'd find a way to talk myself into being happy about it if it did happen, because I do think he's an awesome player. Mark says, if West Coast do pick three for Baker and nine, I'll cancel my 25 year West Coast membership and join the Purple Army. Wow, 25 year membership, good for you, man. Yeah, I've done a whole video of this. I'm, I'm conflicted. I don't think I'm as against it as you are, but I really just don't want us to be shafted here. As I talked about on my True Eagle video, like I don't, have any insight as to which players the Eagles feel would actually come to WA and enjoy it here at the top end of the draft versus, you know, which ones are going to be flight risks? What what do they make of the talent pool? Is there much of a difference between three and nine? I'm going to defer to them on that issue, but we'll see. At this moment, I'm feeling a little bit uneasy about that as well. S10 says Perryman to the Hawks, potentially. Battle Barris will get done, I assume. Yeah, I don't think there's too much doubt around Battle and Barris, um, but Perryman, again, Referring to an earlier comment there, Port Adelaide have a huge offer. It does seem like West Coast have thrown their hat in the ring. Again, it, you'd feel like West Coast would be so far back in trying to lure these players, considering he's not West Australian as well. Starting to wonder if how Hawthorne can afford all these players suddenly. You'd imagine there'd be some pay rises out of their existing group. Battle and Barass would be on some decent money. Um, I realize the whole CBA is going up and the salary cap's going up, but um, yeah, it could happen. It could happen. I think that's probably still the favorite. Ben Akers says Port to miss out in Perryman and get Caleb Daniel. They keep Houston and Land Garcia, lose Soldo for a mid-second, get in someone young from the draft as a tall. So yeah, like I said, they um, there's a chance they miss out on Perryman. They're still a major contender for that. Caleb Daniel makes sense given he's South Australian. There hasn't really been a murmur as to where he's likely to go, and he hasn't requested a trade, but I think that's a reasonable prediction. Houston, again, as I said earlier in this video, I've got real, really no idea what could happen there. We know things can change over the course of a trade period. So I kind of hope he stays at Port Adelaide, to be completely honest. And Riley Garcia, again, nothing really heard about him. If McRae leaves, if Bailey Smith leaves, could he you know, potentially be open to staying at the Western Bulldogs? I think Port, Geelong, and West Coast are the clubs that I've heard were looking at him, but it's really dried up around him since. So Soldo, on the other hand, yeah, that story broke a little while ago where he's potentially looking at moving out of South Australia. I kind of wouldn't mind West Coast having a look. Our ruck situation is dire. As for the draft, yeah, I suppose it depends You know what picks you end up with. You don't have a great draft hand at the moment. Port entered the draft at pick 37, and there are quite a few tours that could still be available around that range. I think it is a pretty good tolls draft in my personal opinion. And from memory, Port Adelaide drafted like three small forwards last year. So I think it's time to go for a toll. Now we've got a few Frio ones in a row. The quarters footy says Frio to make the biggest impact in the trade. Shea Bolton, one of them to the Dockers. Flag Mantle 2024 says, if Frio go big in the trade period and get Shea Bolton, maybe Liam Baker and Chad Warner, they could be right up there in flag favoritism. So I don't think Chad Warner leaving Sydney this year is at all likely. There hasn't really been much of a suggestion. He is contracted until next year. So that would probably be the biggest bombshell trade for some time if he, you know, as soon as Sydney are eliminated or, or win the flag or whatever, decided to leave. So I wouldn't get too hung up on that one. If they did land all those three players, I'd agree you'd have to consider them a serious contender next year, at least for top four. It would be the best midfield in the competition if, uh, if they got Chad Warner for sure. At the risk of being pedantic though, going back to the quarters footy, it is a chance though that Fremantle now only end up with Shea Bolton from this trade period with Liam Baker it being, you know, unsure. Maybe they get Jack Martin as well. We're really talking about Shea Bolton here. And if Hawthorne land all of Perryman, Battle and Barris, you'd think they've probably made the biggest impact. So there's no doubt they're a major player here with a lot of selections. Then we've got Zelma Zam saying, what if Frio kept their picks and didn't do any trades? If I was a Fremantle fan, this wouldn't be my first preference, but there's a chance they can strike a nice balance between both. 
do they need all of Jack Martin, Shea Bolton, Liam Baker, and Cozzy Pickett was another player limited to them? I think if they just go for the best one in Shea Bolton and assume that Chad Warner is not available, they would still hold probably two first round picks, right? So what, are they, what would they realistically give up for Shea Bolton? Pick nine and uh, 27, whatever the second round pick that they hold is. They've got to do a little bit of a juicy deal there to turn Richmond's head because he is contracted at the end of the day, but then they'd still hold 10 and then a later first round pick, which I think is tied to Port Adelaide. This is a nice draft to hold two picks you know, between nine and 18. I think that that was roughly what Fremantle will hold at the end of it till 10 and 17, 10 and 15. Depends how Port Adelaide go against Hawthorne. That is a nice range of the draft, like the top 20. It's still pretty strong. If I were a Fremantle fan, I would prefer to take the two first rounders and get Shea Bolton. That way they do replenish from the draft, which they haven't done for a couple of years now, and they get a big marquee player. But I think with Fremantle's ads, the maturity of their list, adding a game changer like Shea Bolton, is right for them if they can get it done. Gus Monfries says, Luke Parker to North Melbourne. North need him from experience. Clarkson wants someone like him. By the way, what happened to your AFL unpopular opinion video? Yeah, so I've been a little bit unwell lately, so that took me a little while to get that video done. However, that is now up on the True Footy YouTube channel. Getting back to Luke Parker, yeah, that that one, um, I think it caught a few headlines yesterday because Toomey says he expects Luke Parker to be at North Melbourne. We'd be surprised if he wasn't. I have no idea. I think it's a good prediction, and I agree. It's a great choice for North Melbourne. You can talk all day about, you know, getting 30-year-olds, but, you know, not all of them are Luke Parker, and I think that would be an awesome recruitment for them. AFL Snap says, Dan Houston to Essendon. I don't know if this is my ignorance, but I have not really seen any meaningful links for Essendon here. I've seen Collingwood recently linked to him, you know, potentially with the John Noble deal, which we still haven't got to yet. It would be a great recruitment for Essendon and for where they're at, they probably can give up a first round pick considering they're gonna get Isaac Carco anyway, but he's been more strongly linked to teams like Carlton and dare I say Collingwood. North Melbourne have also thrown their hat in the ring. Um, I'd hope they're trying, but I, I have no idea if they're even close to getting Dan Houston or if he's even leaving Port Adelaide. He, he says Roy Lobb to North. Hasn't this kind of been quashed? I thought um, Rory Lobb more or less recommitted to staying once he started to get at games. I think that would be a good recruitment for them, to be honest. But, you know, midway through this year, he might have been a cheap recruit, but then he came back and decided started playing well, contracted. So I don't know about that one. Big Bud says, Peatling to St Kilda. While Rogue Riot says, it's my totally unbiased opinion that James Peatling goes to the Pies. Non-Pies related is memory signs with North and Adelaide don't have what the Suns want and Lukosha stays at the Gold Coast. Yes, yeah, so um, again, since I posted this, I think Pete Ling pretty much came out and said he's committed to staying at the Giants. So both of these might be null and void. Memory to North, potentially, but if, there, if they have offered a two-year deal to Jack Darling or whatever it is, and they are successful, which they may not be, but if they're successful in getting Jack Darling, you think they wouldn't go for Tim Membry. I think that's probably two players of a similar type that would probably just start to clog the team if you got them both to play in the uh, best 22. So maybe as a fallback to Jack Darling because we know they've offered something to Jack Darling. As for Adelaide and Lukosius, you could be right on there. As I said earlier in this video, I try to come up with some ideas of how they'd get it done. I think they'd have to pay up something reasonable, to be honest. I think he's a great player, but they may not be willing to. So that might be the sticking point here. But you know, if I was Adelaide, I'd also hate to see Lukosius go somewhere else. Like it's one thing for him to stay at the Gold Coast Suns and you think, okay, try again in 12 months. But if he signs with the Melbourne Football Club, you're probably giving up that chance to get Lukosius. Alistair Erskine, 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 Perryman coming and full grown Pete, I like that, all stay at the Giants. Yeah, so like I said, Peatling, I think that's a good call, and you probably posted that before the Peatling thing came out, so good call on that. Perryman and Cumming, again, I'm just speculating here, but I can't help but feel if they're unsigned at this point of the season, it's less than 50-50. They wouldn't be the first players to re-sign with their club after the season's ended. It's definitely happened before. I think they're both underrated players. Uh, hopefully, Perryman, you know, throws all logic out the window and joins West Coast, and Isaac Cumming, you can keep Isaac Cumming, even though I would like him as well. You know, that would never happen. Couple on John Noble. Monash Demons says Noble to Gold Coast, and Archie says Noble Gold Coast for pick 20-ish. I think that these are reasonable predictions. I did actually come up with one myself here. Let me get it up in my notes, okay. So going back to this idea that Collingwood would probably be targeting Gold Coast pick 12. I know it came out, they didn't demand pick 12 for John Noble. I know that's been clarified, but what if they try to do a pick swap to get pick 12 as well? So would the Pies give up their future first round selection knowing that they've got a father son in next year's draft? They give up their future first to Gold Coast, Gold Coast get rid of pick 12. Collingwood may finish in the top six next year, which means if that happens, 
then their future first selection is worse than pick 12. If they don't finish in the top six, then it's better than pick 12. Either way, I think Gold Coast can probably afford to roll that dice. But Gold Coast want later picks in this year's draft. So then you could package up for this deal. So I've gone Pies future first, John Noble, and pick 33 to the Gold Coast for pick 12 and pick 20. So essentially it's John Noble for, and for upgrading pick 33 to pick 20. That covers some of the Gold Coast risk. I can see what Pies fans think that's probably slightly not in their favor, but let me know what you think. A few quick ones to rattle off before we finish. Luke Short says Jake Stringer to Collingwood. Yes, that story broke out, uh, I think more recently than this post. Forgive me if I'm wrong. And Barris to the Hawks. I think those are both fairly possible. Uh, certainly Barris and Jake Stringer to Collingwood is more likely than not at this current point in time. Sam Robertson says Gunston back to Brisbane. Is this, um, I'm not being a smart ass here. Is that a, is that a joke? Because I've not seen anything about that. I presume it's a joke. Um, if it's not, let me know in the comments because I've not seen anything about that. That would be just absurd if he did that. I'm going to assume it's a joke. Everything Essendon says Harley Reid, Jake Waterman and Jeremy McGovern to Essendon. Jai Menzi in a future fourth to West Coast. Take it to the bank. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we do need a, a small forward. Um, you know what? I think that's probably stacked in our favor. Do you want Oscar Allen as well? Um, and we'll take Alec Waterman back. I know he's not on your list anymore, but um, that's a sweetener I would take. Challenge edition says Patrick Cripps to West Coast. Yeah, that would be the biggest surprise trade for some time. I think that would be absurd. And Brandon Cavallaro says Bailey Smith to West Coast. Haha, <laughs> LMAO. I think Bailey Smith to West Coast would be just as big a bombshell if it did happen. Um, doesn't sound like he'd want to leave Victoria. Don't get me wrong, I'd snap Bailey Smith up in a heartbeat. I think he is going to be, or has the potential to be, a very, very good A-grade midfielder who performs in finals. We just haven't seen the best of him yet. So trying to talk that into existence. Hopefully Bailey Smith decides he likes Perth beaches. But for now, thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate your input. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.